One of the most exciting things about freshwater fishing here in Victoria at the moment is the introduction of silver perch to so many of our waterways. Now I'm about to fill it and cook my first two legal sized silver perch. Hey you, you're watching Robbie cooking. Now I've caught quite a few silver perch over the last few years but they've all been under size and I finally caught two at Lake Nilakuti yesterday. I'll share the capture footage shortly, the capture component of the catch and cook, but it's not great footage. I set out with Holly, we went fishing at Lake Mudamere and we caught a heap of carp, a few redfin and two silver perch and I wasn't filming, it was just a, a father daughter day to go fishing and have a bit of fun without the camera but I just happened to catch my, uh, my first legal size silver perch so I put my phone into video mode and I I filmed it and Holly also caught a nice one after that and I'm going to cook them both now. Now just quickly before I start because I want to get straight into this, silver perch, there is a bit of a misbelief here in Victoria that they are a protected species, they're not totally, they are a partial protected species. So they're protected in some waterways and not others. At the time of filming, which is February 2023, you can keep up to five silver perch per person per day. They've got to be over 30 centimetres. These are 32 and 34 centimetres. So they've got to be over 30 centimetres. And you can only keep them from dams or lakes. You can't keep them from rivers or streams. You can only keep, so you can't keep them from the Goulburn River or the Campaspe River, but you can keep them out of the lakes or dams or many of the smaller waterways that Victorian fisheries are stocking. And just to make it that little bit more confusing, south of the Great Dividing Range, you can keep them from anywhere because that's, they're not endemic to that region. So there's no, they don't have as much protection. But here in Northern Victoria, or in the Murray-Darling catchment of Northern Victoria, you can keep up to five silver perch per day, but they've got to be 30 centimetres or more. And I highly recommend before you keep any fish that you are up to date with, uh, with the rules and regulations, and you can check them out by downloading the Victorian Fishing app. Anyway, let's go and start cooking. Now the lighting is terrible here, but it should be okay down there where I'm filleting, hopefully. I didn't want to fillet these fish in the sun because it's summer and it's hot and I didn't want the fish to go off. So I'm doing it in the shade where it's a little bit cooler. But before I start filleting, here is some footage of the fish being caught, or one of them being caught, and a photo of Holly with her bigger one, and then we'll start filleting. Well folks, I've come over to Lake Moodamere fishing with Holly. We've just caught about 12 or 15 carp. One nice redfin, three or four small redfin, and now I've caught this silver perch. I wasn't filming, it was a non-filming day, but I want to film this because I want to fill up this and cook it up so that you can see it. So this is the catch component of the silver perch catch and cook video. I'm sorry you didn't see the bite or the hookup. And there's Holly there. And we've got a heap of, uh, we've got a pile of small dead carp. And we've got a, uh, and I've got one nice redfin in the esky, and now I've got a magnificent silver perch to go with it, about 35 centimetres long. I'll land it, and then I'll bring you back. Right, there's my silver. I wouldn't use the landing net for a redfin or a yellow belly that size, but I really did not want this one to get off. I'm disappointed. It was a, a non-filming day. I didn't even bring any camera gear with me. I'm filming this with my phone, but I'm going to cook this up, and you're going to get to see the silver perch cook up and uh, we'll see what they taste like. You ripper! There we go, look at that. The minimum size here in Victoria is 30 and that's about 32. Awesome, he's only just oversized. Right, I'm gonna go and gut it. The next time you see it, I'm gonna be filleting it. There we go, a couple of fresh fish in the esky. Now because I've never eaten silver perch before, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill up the larger one, the 34 centimetre fish, and I'm going to cook the 32 centimetre one whole. I don't know what these are going to taste like, so I want to cook them in different ways. I'm going to cook this one whole, I'm going to fill up this, I'm going to breadcrumb one of the fillets, cook the other fillet natural, and cook one whole. That'll give me three different ways to try these fish. So I'll put this one over here. Now let's get started. The first thing I noticed, well, that's a bit of gill in there, it's never good to leave gills in fish because it can make them go off. When I break the fish's neck, I like to stick my fingers up under the neck, pull the head back and break the neck. When I've done it with the silver perch, I almost pulled the fish's head clean off. It's, uh, it's easy to pull silver perch heads off when you break their neck. That was the first thing I noticed. Right, that can go over there. 
Once again, I'm out the bush so I can throw my scraps in the bush. Now, because I don't know what I'm expecting, I've got three different knives with me. I've got a long filleting knife, a short, heavier, I use, I call this a boning knife. I'll try and cut through the bones with this. And I've got my regular filleting knife. Now, there's two ways to do this. I don't know whether to go in that way. You can go in behind there and then cut across the top, or I can just saw straight through like I did with the red fin. It's a slightly larger fish, so it might be hard to cut through the bones. I think I'll go in this way if I can. But uh, the skin is very tough. Oh, it's much tougher meat to cut through than the red fin. It's a much tougher meat to cut through than the red fin. Now, I did cop a fair bit of flack for my last uh, red fin filleting video about cutting towards myself. But anyway, you get that on the big jobs. <laughs> I'm not an expert at this. Just cut through them bones with this knife. Right, there's one side off. Now I'm doing this much the same as I filleted that red fin recently. Cut the shoulder off. There's me fillets, all that's left now is to skin them. I'm actually using a different knife last this time. If you watch my last video where I uh, filleted the red fin, I said sometimes it's not good to have too sharp a knife for this. This knife's not quite as sharp as that other one. And if you look at that, there is no meat on there. That has separated the meat from the skin beautifully. Perfect. Right now, there's my two fillets. Now I'm going to go and get my uh, frying pan and set up and get ready to start cooking. Now, one thing that I have realised just now is that I forgot to bring water. I forgot to bring water to wash my hands. I've got a towel I can wipe them on, but I can't wash the fillets. That should be fine, although I might just end up with a few extra scales stuck between my teeth. <laughs> Righto, let's light this stove. I'll take this off and see how it goes. First go. That's a ripper, this stove. I really enjoy cooking with it. Now, I'm not using butter this time like I normally do. I'm using uh, oil simply because I'm out of butter. I didn't realise until I was just about to leave and I was packing everything in. I went to grab the butter and I didn't have any. So I'm just going to put a bit of oil in. I don't need too much, I don't reckon. I'm not a very good cook. I'll see if I can smear that out right across the bottom. Basically, I really only want the fish, I want the oil to stop the fish from sticking to the bottom of the pan. But it's a non-stick pan anyway. But I might just put a little bit of flavour into the meat as well. Right now, I've got my whole fish. What I'm going to do with that is I'm going to rip the head off. Just sit that straight in the pan. Now, I've got some panko crumbs for this scene. For this time. Last time I uh, I used herb, herb and garlic. Everybody says try panko crumbs, try panko crumbs. Panko crumbs are nice but I prefer the herb and garlic to be honest. I'll turn that down a little bit. Just personal preference I'd prefer the herb and garlic. I just found that it's uh, 
I don't know, it's just a lot, I, like the, I think I like the garlic taste to be quite honest. Right, eh? Now I'm doing the same as last week. I've just I've put one of my silver perch fillets in the Ziploc bag with the panko crumbs. Because I forgot to bring water, the fillet isn't all that wet, so it's uh, not going to be crumbed very well. But anyway. It's barely going to be crumbed at all. And there's natural. Right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this on to keep cooking because it's much thicker and it's going to take a lot longer. I'm going to take these off and eat them and then eat that one a bit after and then I'll tell you what they taste like at the end. I'll start, I'll leave this one on for a minute just in case it's not cooked through. I've just realised something else that I forgot is my knife and fork. I had it on the list, I'm sure I forgot it. No way! Well, I've just realised that I forgot my knife and fork, so I'm going to have to eat it by hand. And it's hot. I've got a bone. I've got a couple of bones. First impressions are okay, not great, but not bad. I'll eat it and I'll bring you back at the end with my final thoughts. Right, oh, I think my whole fish is almost cooked. I've um, I've cranked the heat up to burn the skin on the outside just to sear it a bit. Although I'm pretty sure I won't be eating the skin anyway. Looking good. Now I can't believe that I've totally forgotten to bring a knife and fork. But anyway, I've got a knife here that I used to cut the fish up. Probably not overly hygienic, but it'll do. I wonder what the skin tastes like. Can I eat the skin? I've got a funny feeling the skin's going to be way too crap. Yeah, the skin isn't great. I'll pull, ow, I'll pull that top fin out. This is the best part of a fish to eat, this bit along the back, above the backbone. So I'll see if I can just break that off there like that. Without a knife and fork. And it's hot. And I'll try that little bit, and I'll let you know what it tastes like. Got a bit of salt on it. That's quite nice. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Right, I'm gonna get the meat off this, then I'm gonna eat it, and then I'm gonna bring you back with my final thoughts, but I'm gonna find somebody with a bit better lighting to talk to the camera. Right, I've just finished my breakfast of champions and it was magnificent. Or was it? Oh, well, before I describe my breakfast and tell you what I thought of the fish, big shout out to Zepp. Zeppelin Allen for sending me this apron from Now Now. Handmade at the Farmer's Cottage, which is in Now Now. Thank you, Farmer's Cottage. Thank you, Zepp. Now, 
How was the silver perch? Well, it was edible. It was okay. It was edible. That makes it better than carp. <laughs> but it wasn't anywhere near the league of a, a nice, juicy, succulent redfin or a yellow belly. Anybody that's ever eaten a large yellow belly up around the 50 centimetre size or even a bit bigger out of a lake will tell you that they get a really overbearing, fatty, oily flavour. Well, that's sort of what those silver perch were like. They're quite an oily fish, or they're a very oily fish. They're not a flaky fish, like the redfin or even the smaller yellow belly where the meat comes apart. They're quite oily, and that's a good thing for those of us that forget to bring a knife and fork, because you can pick up the whole fillet and chew on the end. <laughs> but they, look, they were okay. They weren't, they're certainly not my favourite eating fish. Of the three ways that I cooked them, filleted plain, filleted with crumbs, which wasn't many crumbs because I forgot to bring water, and whole, I think the crumb, the fillets with the crumbs was the best. Next time I cook it, I'm going to try, I'll just dry fry it. I won't use any oil at all. I think the fish is quite oily as it is. The bones on the rib cage were quite big. So when you fill it, if you miss the bones, you can easily get them out. They're, they're not like redfin bones. It can be a little bit small and fiddly. These are quite big bones. Filleting itself wasn't, wasn't too bad. The skin was tough. It was harder to cut through. But the flesh was okay. And they filleted quite well. Similar to a redfin. I think... The bones being bigger make it harder to cut through the bones. I wouldn't want to. I used one of my older little stay sharp knives to cut through the bones. Had I not had that with me with my good filleting knife, I would have carved around the bones, which I don't like to do because I, I'm not very good at it. I prefer to cut through the bones. But it is harder to cut through the bones, but other than that, filleting was very similar to redfin and the taste was okay. Give it a go. Fisheries stock heaps. The family friendly waterways are stocked heavily with silver perch. There's a lot of silver perch in our uh, in our river system. I wouldn't mind seeing the size limit reduced. The yellow belly size limit is 30 centimetres and the silver perch size limit is 30 centimetres. Yet yellow belly grow to be much bigger. A yellow belly at 30 to 35 centimetres is a beautiful eating fish. A silver perch at 30 centimetres is already quite a fatty fish so it might be worth uh, and revising the size limit to bring it down, I really don't know. But the, the, uh, the aim of this video was to tell you what silver perch tastes like, and they're okay. I suspect a lot of people won't like them, but I know there'll be some that do. Give it a try. You might only try it once, or you might find yourself addicted to them. Thanks very much for watching my silver perch catch and cook. I hope you've enjoyed it.